Hello students, I have uh, already shared the answers for first 10 questions of this mock exam, yeah, maybe a 2 mock exam too. Uh, so let me start with the 11th question now. Following details have been extracted from the receivable records of X. 60% paid in the month after sales, 20% 2 months after sales, 15% 3rd month and 5% bad debts. June, July, August, these are the sales. Customers paying in the month after sale are entitled for 2% settlement discount. Uh, how much will be expected uh, uh, to be received in September 2021? Let me copy these values. This is uh, June, July, August, right? September will be from August. You get uh, sixty percent each, but there is a settlement discount of two percent each, so you get only ninety eight percent each. Then twenty percent each from the previous month. Twenty plus. 15 presentation from the month before that 15 presentation. <clears throat> there was a disruption uh, disturbance in the uh, recording so let me let me redo this part uh, from August you get 60% but there is a 2% settlement discount therefore you have to multiply by 98% from previous month you get 20% from the month before that you get 15% 121440 would be the right answer 121440 uh, we have the answer option C option C option C Question number 12, which of the following statements are true? The main role of management accountant is to produce financial accounts. No, that's wrong. Management account, because that's financial accountant's role. Management accountants always work with uh, in financial function. Uh, not always they work with the finance function. They can be outside the finance function as well. For example, one day a management accountant can become the CEO of a company in case, in that case, he is not limited to finance function only. Yes, management accountants always work in partnership with business managers. Yeah, so uh, always is the problem here. Because you know, management accountants to work with business managers, there are different different options. You remember uh, shared services center, uh, uh business partners likewise i gave you multiple options so how management accountant can be attached to the business this is not the only only option working in partnership right so always work in partnership is wrong therefore none of these statements are true option d is right option d Thirteenth one thirteen. An engineering firm operates a job costing system. Production overhead is absorbed by the rate of 8.5 per machine hour. In order to allow for non-production overhead cost and profit, a markup of 60% of prime cost is added to the production cost when preparing price state estimates. The estimated requirements of job number 808 are as follows. Materials 10,650. Materials 10,650. When you are doing it for the exam, don't waste your time, you know, writing the description and all that. Just write the numbers and add them. Uh, labor 3260. Overhead is going to be 140 hours at 8.5. Because per machine hour, machine hours. So it will be 140 hours at 8.5. Plus, uh, okay. Uh, but they say 60 percentage of prime cost is added 60 percentage of prime cost uh, remember this is not prime cost prime cost means these two only 
So how much markup you are going to add? How much markup you are going to add? We'll add these two first, and then multiply that by sixty percentage to find the markup, right? Because this is overhead. This is overhead. There's a prime cost. Yeah, the estimated price notified to the customer for job. Give the answer to hall number without dizziness. Okay. So the price is going to be. 23446. 23446. Let's check with the answers I have given. 11th one, 11th one, 11th one, option C, D23446. Check. These are the answers I gave you. Next one. 14. Look at the following is true about uh, these costs. Look at these numbers uh, at 100 units and 140 units. Check. Easy to identify fixed cost. Now look at this one. X is constant at both activity levels, right? 100 units, 5,000. 140 units is 5,000. Since it is constant at both cases, it has to be a fixed cost. I don't see a similar behavior in the other costs. Yes. So only X is fixed. Only X is fixed. Right. So we will start working with that. Question 14. Straight away, I can say X is fixed. Only X is fixed, others are not fixed. So let's analyze the others now. W is there, X is already tested, Y and that. How we do the analysis? Now, after you identify it is not fixed, identify cost per unit at 100 units and at uh, 140 units. Look at this. 8000, 10,560. 8000 means you divide that by 100. 80. Here you divide by uh, 10,560 divided by 140. The different figure is different. If it is different, you can say it's not variable as well. If it is not fixed, not variable, the only other option we have is semi variable. If we don't prove it as semi variable, the moment we identify it's not fixed and it's not variable, it has to be semi variable only. We don't have any other types of cost in our syllabus. Uh, 6500, 9100. 6500, 400 units. 9100, 400 units. No, 140 units. 6565. See, unit cost is constant. That's one of the features of which one? Variable cost. Variable costs. Last one. Six seven eight five eighty. Six thousand seven hundred eight five eighty. The figures are different. Unit cost is different, so it has to be. It's not fixed. It's not variable. Semi variable. Then. So the answer is W X Y and Z. W is semi variable. X is fixed, Y is variable, that is semi again, semi fixed variable semi, semi fixed variable semi, see option B is right in this case, option B. Question number 15. Option B must be right. Check this. Yeah, 14 option B is right. 15. A standard cost is planned unit cost of a product, component, or service in a period. Budgeted cost, yeah, I think I think answer is right. That's the estimated cost or planned cost for a particular unit or component or whatever. Option A is right. Only to waste the time. Option A. Question 16. Material price variance. Price variance. Fastest method is doing with the equation standard price, actual price multiplied by actual quantity purchased. So that is a standard price, actual price. Standard price is 10. Actual price, I will divide and find it. 342 36 10 minus 342,000 
divided by 36,000 multiplied by 36,000. Eighteen thousand positive answer favorable. Which option do we have? Eighteen favorable B. Option D. Question number seventeen. Which one of the following factors could possibly explain a favorable material usage variance? Favorable usage variance means uh, uh, they are the 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 material consumption had been less than what we expected the possible reasons before we look at the answer laborers could have been more skilled so that they don't waste materials or you have bought better quality material or better working conditions so these are the possible reasons for favorable variance let's see the answer most staff were recruited to inspect quality resulting in a higher rejection rate no higher rejection rate will have more units to rework more units to rework means more material consumption which means uh, the material usage variance will be adverse will not be favorable b when estimating the standard cost usage of material has been set using ideal standard ideal standard means two difficult standards to achieve uh, which are achievable under ideal working conditions which doesn't have any allocations for losses so obviously ideal standards most of the times they give adverse variances partly they will give you favorable variances the ideal standard means giving you a mock exam and telling that you are to get 100 marks so almost all of you are going to get adverse variance because rarely students get 100 marks for a mock exam right and uh, favorable variance is impossible getting more than 100 marks like that company. so ideal standards mostly result in adverse variances the company had reduced training of production workers as part of Cost reduction exercise. If you reduce the training, they're going to be less skilled, uh, then they will waste material. So, usage variance cannot be favorable, it has to be adverse. The material price variance was adverse. There is a possibility that it could be linked. Price variance adverse means you are buying at a higher price. Buying at a higher price means it might be because of higher quality. Higher quality material can result in usage variance favorable. Question also asks you which of the following factors could possibly explain because of that option D is that. So don't take a conclusion, it's always the same. Material price variance is adverse. Will it be the usage variance favorable always? No, no, possibly it can happen. Because if the price variance adverse is due to buying better quality material. So 17 one option D. Only in one option D. 18 one. XYZ operates an integrated accounting system, material control account. 125,000 credit entry represents the value of the transfer to. You know, in material control accounts, uh, it can either go to overheads, yes, it can go to work in progress, or it can go to non production overhead. Those are the three we, we take from material. So here production overhead is already there. So what remaining could be either work in progress or non-production overhead. Which one do we have? Work in progress is there. Option D. Option D. I think we'll check the answers for 16, 17, 18. Let's check it. 16, 17, 18. The answers I gave you. 16, 17, 18. All D. The next two also have to be D. After doing you check that. Question number 19. In an integrated bookkeeping system, the actual production overhead exceeds absorbed production overhead. Wait, if absorbed is less, if actual is more, you call it under absorption. The accounting entries to close off the production overhead account as they end up period. I gave it as a note. Under absorption, what do we do? It's like an additional cost, right? In your in your uh, uh, income statement in your income statement uh, costs are taken in the debit side costs are taken in the debit side uh, sales come on the credit side so under absorption means it's like an extra expense for you so in the income statement that means profit and loss account it should come to the debit side and production overhead control account there will be a balance on the credit side so you have to put it in the credit side and balance it uh, see which option is there 
debit the profit and loss account and credit fraction over it account. Option D is right. Question 20. Point K, this one, on the graph indicates the value of profit versus level of activity. When the level of activity is zero, uh, the profit will be equal to a loss of fixed cost, isn't it? Because you don't have any contribution. Profit means what? Contribution minus fixed cost. Zero units, zero contribution. But still fixed cost is going to be there, which means this will show you value will be equal to fixed cost, but it will be minus sign. You may ask about the value, fixed cost, 20 is one to be. Cool. Those are the answers for the uh, second set of 10 questions. That means 11th to 20th. Please check those answers. And in the next video, I'll share the answers for uh, 21 to 30. Thank you.